In this video, we are going to explore how we can maintain the budget availability control for cost centers in SAP S4 HANA. First of all, we will start here with the backend configuration and then I will show you how the budget availability is actually applied to Fiori. So we start here by going into the customizing, so insert SPRO, click on ZAP Reference IMG and then we will go here to controlling, cost center accounting, budget availability control for cost centers. So click on this one and here you can see actually the customizing for the budget availability control for our cost centers. Please be aware that there is an information section so you could actually click on this one over here to display more details and also the relevant S notes. But for now we will start here with maintain budget availability control profile for cost centers. Let's click on this one. So this is the heart of our budget availability control. Let's actually create a new one over here. So we click on new entries. We give it a name, let's say Z123. Then we have the availability control type. So for sure, obviously this is a cost center. Then we give it a name. So let's say cost center budget test. Then we have here time range. So we select annual budget, meaning that the posted cost later on will be compared to the annual budget. And here we can say that the budget currency type should be either the company code currency or the global currency. So we will say here company code currency. That's basically it. Now we select our entry and double click here on account groups. And here we must define for which account groups this profile should be valid. So we click on new entries. So here in the account group section, we must first provide a so-called GL account hierarchy. And those are actually the hierarchies managed with the Fiori application called Manage Global Hierarchies. Let me quickly show this to you. So now we are here in Fiori and we navigate to the application called Manage Global Hierarchies. Select this one. And here you can see that there are already lots of hierarchies defined in my system. However, the one we are searching for is called YCOA. Let's select this one. And here you can see the global hierarchy for our chart of accounts. So actually, all of the profit and loss accounts are assigned over here. So this is a simple hierarchy. However, you can also create complex ones. So we will now take this hierarchy over here. And also you can see right now there's only one subnote. This is the so-called account group. We must select in our backend system in a second. So let's go to the backend system. Over here we select YCOA all. And then we must choose the GL account group. And as you can see, there's only one right now. And that's basically it. Now let's hit on enter. We select the entry and then we go to the tolerance limit section. So here we click on new entries again and then we provide an activity group. So we could even restrict here for which kind of activities the budget availability controls should be set. So for instance, for purchase requisitions, purchase orders, and so on. For now, we will just say for all activity groups, then we have here message level. So either we can display a warning message or an error message, let's say warning first. And let's say if 90% of our budget for the cost center is already used, then the system should display a warning message if you want to issue more costs to this cost center. And then we need a next line where we say all activity groups error. And if 100% of the budget is already utilized and we try to post more costs to this cost center, then the system will display an error message. Okay, let's now click on save. And that's basically it. The data was saved. Now we go back a couple of times up until we are here in the customizing screen again. Now next off, we will click on this indicator over here, maintain category for planning. Select this one. So the system will use those plan categories over here to distinguish different sets of plan data. So for instance, here plan data for projects, for cost centers, and so on and so forth. Actually, we do not need to maintain anything over here normally. We can just utilize the budget 02, which is already pre-shipped by SAP. We can also double click over here to inspect the details. So you can see there is a description and then we have an application type defining specific applications utilizing those plan data later on. So we also could set here other ones. Then we have an exchange rate type to store different exchange rates. And we have a usage set to two, meaning that this plan category is used for a cost center budget. It could also be utilized for sure here for other application types such as a project budget. And last but not least, you can see allow entry delete of plan data. And here we can see for this plan category over here, only importing financial plan data is allowed. So far, so good. We will go back, back again. Now, next off, we go to define budget checks for categories. Let's click on this one. And here we can see for our cost center budgeting. So we actually select the line. Then you can see the technical names are being displayed. So for budget 02, which we just inspected a second ago, you can see that the availability control is set to active. 
and also the budget consistency check is set to active as well. This is the standard best practice. So hit those two indicators, where the first one actually says that the plan data of this category is defined as budget for our availability control. And this one over here will say that we activate consistency checks against the actual amount when entering plan data. So the system will actually check if we upload plan data that the current actual amounts in the system are less than the plan data over here. Okay, so far so good, let's go back and check the next one. We will have here a step called check prediction ledger. And this we activate if we want to utilize the so-called predictive accounting. So we make the budget availability control active for our so-called extension ledger. I will explain you more about this in a separate video. For now, let's click on this one. Here you can see for our extension ledger for commitments and predictions, we set the flag that is relevant for commitment management. Let's go back. Then we have here the step called define budget document type, where we just need to assign a number range to the standard document type as underscore BT. And then also, if we go back, here we can define the number range. So if we insert our controlling area and click on intervals, we can also see the number range was already created. So far for the customizing, let's now jump into Fiori to see this in action. So in Fiori, we navigate to the application called Manage Cost Centers, this one over here. Let's actually create a new one. Let's do it like that. Provide a cost center and then a person responsible. A name for the cost center description. Let me just quickly fill this. The cost center category, we'll just say marketing. The validity is fine so far. If we scroll down a bit, we must assign a standard hierarchy node and a company code. That's basically it. If we scroll down now, we can see here a section called Budget Availability Control. So the budget carrying cost center should be the one we are just creating. Then we have the budget availability control profile that we defined. So Z123. And we will set here the budget availability control is active to on. Just one more important remark. Let's scroll up a bit. Here you must sure to not lock the commitment updates so that when we post non-financial documents like a purchase order or purchase requisition and we incur costs against our cost center, then already the system will check against the available budget that we assign to this cost center. So we will deselect this one over here and click on save. And you can see the cost center was created successfully. Now next off, we will upload some budget for this cost center. So we go to the application called import financial plan data. Select this application. Now we go to download template. We will select cost center budgeting and then we save it to our desktop. Next off, we open it and then we will insert our plan category budget 02. Fiscal years 2025, posting period, then the company code, as well as the cost center we created, then our account number, for sure this is an expense account over here, the amount, let's say 10,000, and the currency, and that's basically it. Now let's save this template. We will close this section over here in Fiori, click on Browse CSV files, now select the file and open. Now we can click here first on Test Import Source File, and you can see a success message so the test import of plan data was successful. Now we can click on import source file to actually import the budget for our cost center. And you can see the plan data has been imported successfully. Now we will navigate to the application called cost center budget report, this one over here. Now we insert the right company code, a fiscal year and our budget carrying cost center and hit on go. And now you can see also over here that we have a budget of 10,000 euro in this case and the commitments column is actually zero as of now, as we did not post any data against this cost center so far. Now we will actually post something against this cost center. So we go to the application called Manage Purchase Orders, this one over here. Let's click on Create. We insert at least the currency, then the purchasing group, purchasing organization, and company code over here. Then we must insert a supplier, and that's basically it. We will go to the item section over here, and go here to the dots and to create. We will select the material, net order price, let's say 9,000. So actually 90% of our budget, order quantity, of course. That's basically it. Now we only have warning messages, but let's actually navigate into the purchase order item. Let's actually select here an account assignment category to a cost center. And if we now go here to the right, we will find a section called account assignment. And over here, we will assign the cost center that we created and also the GL account for which we uploaded our budget with the CSV file upload you've seen a second ago. Let's now click on apply. And now let's click on order. And you can see the purchase order was created successfully. Now that's basically it. If we now go to the application called cost center budget report, this one over here, 
we select the right company code, fiscal year and our budget carrying cost center. This one over here, hit on go. Then we can now see here, the system already posted 9,000 euro in the commitments column. So this means that in the end, the system now already considered postings to this cost center, even if we did not yet create any financial documents, because we just created the purchase order. And this would also work with a purchase requisition. There's also another application called commitments by cost center, where we can check by the go button over here, the commitments for this cost center. So far, so good. Now we will post the goods received. So we go to post goods received for purchasing document. We will insert the purchasing document number, this one over here. You can see all good. So we select the material over here and we click on post. And you can see the material document was created. Let's inspect this document real quick. And here, if we click on process flow, you can also see that an accounting document was now created as well. So now let's go back to the cost center budget report and hit on go again. We can see now that the commitments reduced to zero. And if we scroll a bit to the right, we can see the actual costs in our company code currency are now at 9,000. So this means that we have an available budget of 1,000 left. So if we now go back to the manage purchase orders application, we just copy here our purchase order like that. We can already see over here there's an error message. Let's display this one. You can see that the budget tolerance of 100 would be reached if we want to create a new purchase order with the same net order price of 9,000 because then in the end we would have 18,000 to so 8,000 more than what would be allowed. So let me quickly show you something else. If we go for, let's say 500 over here, then you can see there's only a warning message being displayed. The budget tolerance limit of 90 for the cost center has been reached or to be precise overreach because with our former purchase order we already reached 90% so at 90.01% this warning message would be displayed. However, we could now still post the new purchase order. Now let me show you how we can actually increase the budget. For sure you could do it via the application I've already shown you to upload the budget via flat file. However, for day-to-day -day business, you could also use the application called Manage Cost Center Budgets, this one over here. So here we can click on Create and then we can either say Budget Transfer. So we want to transfer the budget from one cost center to another. Budget Return, meaning that we would take away some budget from the cost center or Budget Supplement, meaning that we want to increase the budget. Let's take the latter one. Over here we select the controlling area. The plan category must be set and the document type. This is the one you've also seen in the customizing where we assigned the number range. Now in the supplement item section, we will take here our cost center and an account number. And we will say here amount and company code currency. Let's say we increase the budget by 2000. And that's it. We can now click on create. You can see the budget document has been created. Let's now for the last time go to the cost center budget report. Hit on go again. And you can see now the budget is set to 12,000. So it was increased by 2000. And this also means that our available budget increased by 2000 as well. Okay, this marks the end of the video. It took a lot of effort. So I'd really appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. Also make sure to subscribe to my Patreon, where we have a community chat and where I post lots of informative documents. The link is in the bio of my channel. Thanks a lot and see you next time.